we are still talking about uh, fire. We'll come back to another uh, session. A session. Remember, we are discussing on the um, safety and health on site. Safety and health on site, but not only on site. Maybe I may say site is anywhere where you are doing your activity uh, in the workshop, your kitchen. Uh, your car, your vehicle, where when, when you are driving, make sure that that is the workshop, that is the office. So you make sure that there is a, a proper protection in terms of fire. Okay, all the vehicles must have fire extinguishers. Houses must have fire extinguishers. Schools, offices must have fire extinguishers. All business centers must have fire hydrants. The streets along the the with the streets in the city, streets, all the roads must have fire hydrants. This is because we don't know when fire can, can occur. So it will help us to protect our properties. Okay, so today we are looking at the classes of fire. Classes of fire. Okay, so uh, last time we were discussing on the fire. We said fire is a combination of... Um, uh, three things. Number one, um, fuel, talking about um, uh, air, that is oxygen, then talking about heat. So it, it is in the form of a triangle. So when the three are combined, okay, it will, it will actually cause it to form a fire. When there is a combustible product, it will, be, it will form fire. So today we are looking at the three classes, then uh, also on how to fight. Uh, fire and also um, how to use these fire extinguishers or equipment okay so uh, fire are commonly classified in two five grouping okay fire is classified in two five groupings according to the fuel types this actually depend on the types of fuel so we are saying fire is in five groups in short this actually depend on the type of fuel. Now, what is a fuel? A fuel is any combustible substance. Alright? A fuel is any combustible substance. Can we give example of this? We are talking about a paper. We are talking about a hood. We are talking about charcoal. Talking about anything. Fuel. Or maybe talking about uh, kerosene. Talking about petrol talking about anything that can cause fire, is a fuel, right? Now, what are these classes? Class A, we are not talking about class 1, class 2, class 3. They are in alphabetical order. Class A, fire, this is the fire uh, involving solid fuel. Class A, the fire involving solid what? Fuels. Okay, what are these solid fuel? Okay, we are talking about firewood. Talking about charcoal. These are the examples. Okay, okay, we're talking about paper. Okay, dry paper, dry food. These are example of fire or class A fire. Okay, where there are a lot of solid fuel. Okay. Class B. Class B is a fire involving flammable liquid. Remember, we started with solid fuel. Then class B is flammable liquids. What are these flammable liquids? We can give example of paraffin, petrol, uh, made oil. We may talk about grease. We may talking about we may talk about cooking oil all these are flammable liquids i can give example of fire class b okay maybe it is a, a cooking oil cooking oil is basically one example most most, most important example i can give okay now before we go in further, I said in fire class A, this is a fire involved with solid what? 
uh, fuels. Now, how can you distinguish? I mean, how can you extinguish this? We only extinguish class A fire by using water. Get the point? By using what? Water. So if you say you find fire caused by maybe there's firewood, there's charcoal, there's papers, don't use other uh, media, but use what? Water only. Class B, we only extinguish fire by foam or carbon dioxide. Now, this carbon dioxide can be filled in the container, okay, in the cylinder, okay, in the cylinder. Okay, that is it, um, class B, foam or carbon dioxide. Class C, this is a fire involving flammable gases. Okay, class B, the fire involving flammable gases. What are these flammable gases? This should be uh, petrol, should be kerosene. Okay, these are the gas, these are gases that can cause fire. But how are we going to stop this fire? We only stop this fire by dry powder. We only stop this fire caused by gases using dry powder what are these dry powder i give example of sand that's the reason why many of the time if you go around feeding stations garages in the garage feeding station you need you, there's need of a provision of a bucket of sand get the point yeah if you find the feeding station is sand you mean that those people they understand because they are dealing with gas, eh? gases. So sand is the only extinguisher that can stop that fire caused by gases. Okay. Now, we have another class, class D. I told you that these classes are in the alphabet order. Class D, fire involving flammable metals. Flammable what? Yeah. Metals. I can give an example of flammable metals. Um, uh, we have these metals coated with the uh, paint, uh, maybe iron sheets. Get a point? Yes. Yeah, so these are metals that can easily cause fire. They are in class D. So, this should only be dis uh, extinguished by dry powder as well. Now, why talking about dry powder and gases, dry powder and metals? Remember, in the, in the last presentation, we said, you know, even the paint contains flammable substances, isn't it? Yes. Yeah, if the iron sheet or maybe the metal is coated with paint, it means that it will be very easy the fire to actually to attack that metal. This is the reason why we should also use um, should also use uh, not uh, not water, but we not foam, but we not carbon dioxide. But we need to use what? Dry powder, which is sand, isn't it? Yeah. So, the last one, the last one is class C. This is a class type of fire involving cooking oil and also fats. Class E, cooking oil and fats. This should be also extinguished by wet chemicals, wet chemicals, dry chemicals, even foam based with special additive okay yeah so what what we mean here is that uh, we need to use um means on how to stop that fire being caused by what fats right. and also cooking oil i remember we in the presentation we said you can still use a blanket okay wet blanket then you, you dry it a, lot, a bit uh, but but it should not be dry, but at least it's, it's, it's wet, isn't it? Then you should use it to stop uh, to stop this kind of fire. So we 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 have discovered that we have uh, four groups. I mean five, five groups of fire. Okay, class A, class B, class C, D, and E. Once you understand this type of fire, 
then you will be able even to know what type of fire extinguishers to to use okay now um we have fire extinguishers fire extinguishers these are products or maybe we can say these are equipment that used to stop small fire not too much fire <laughs> eh? not too much fire fire in the market the house it can't work okay so therefore we use the fire extinguishers small fire extinguishers it could be put out quickly and safety this is the reason why we are emphasizing that all the offices all the houses all the working places they must be a fire extinguisher okay now these fire extinguishers also depend on the type of or class of what fire get the point eh? yeah but many of the time we find that one fire extinguishers it has got three things 